Hey, this is Pam Perry, and we are here with Digital Branding, right? The Summit. So today we're going to talk about five ways where you can get publicity without hiring a publicist. Now, I've been a career publicist all my life. Am I trying to talk myself out of a job? No, actually, still I do publicity, but it's a lot different than it was 20, 30 years ago. So today we're going to actually go over my presentation and you'll walk away with some nuggets on how you can be your own publicist. I won't say that it's easy, but it's not hard. I would say that it's simple, but it does take some work. So what we'll do today is we'll go over the basics, I guess you would say, of the publicity. All right. So ready to go? Here we go. All right, so five ways to get publicity without hiring a publicist. How do we do that? But first, let me tell you a little bit about who I am, right? It's like, who is this woman, Pam Perry? So my career has been the last 30 years, but in business for the last, actually probably longer than 30, but I'm not gonna age myself. <laughs> I have been showing authors and entrepreneurs, speakers on how to win online and in business. Recently, I've been uh, awarded a couple of awards. One was the uh, Michigan, top 10 Michigan women in business. Been in business since 2000, so that's roughly 20 years. So obviously when I first started, I wasn't showing people how to win online because that was new. So this digital branding thing is part of my reinvention. And I really, really do enjoy the online world. Publicity and social media kind of went collided. They collided from the standpoint that a lot of my colleagues, they did not really embrace social media when it first came out. I remember MySpace. I know I'm dating myself, so just... Just bear with me. But I remember when MySpace came out and I was really uh, doing publicity for a lot of authors. And I was saying that they needed to create my MySpace profiles. Uh, no, they were like, I'm not doing that. I don't, I don't want to do that. And then Facebook came along and said, well, you need to create some face a Facebook profile and interact with your readers. Marvel that, right? Interact with readers? Are you kidding me? I'm not interacting with readers. I am an author and I'm a celebrity. I don't interact with readers. And eventually they got used to it. Now, mind you that my company, Ministry Marketing Solutions, I was dealing with ministries. So I said, listen, think of it as like a place where you have to go and evangelize. So we need to go into the world to go ye. So we do have to get on MySpace. We do have to go into Facebook. This is before Twitter. We do have to really do these things and set up profiles and interact with your readers. They did learn how to do that. I showed them how to do that. Now, giving you the difference between when that really started and where we are now, before when I did PR, I did PR for a lot of nonprofits. The last one that I worked for was the Salvation Army. I was the director of public relations for the Michigan division. And really when we did PR then, we had to write press releases and fax them. Yeah, that was the thing. And we even got really cool at one point where we were doing fax blasting, right? So you can just hit one button and then fax it to a lot of the media. Oh, it, I'm so glad social media came on the scene. So, so from there, a lot of, then it became a thing where we weren't faxing, we were emailing and we were emailing reporters and producers and, and things like that. But the, the main thing after the internet took on was that then there was a thing called SEO press releases. I'm saying all, to, all that to say is that press releases are always like the basis for getting any kind of publicity, whether you're faxing it, emailing it, mailing it, uh, you know, sending them an inbox message, press releases are required. All right. So a little bit about me, just to give you a background. Some of the clients I've worked with, the, the notable ones, I've worked with probably three or 400 um, authors over the years. After a certain, a certain amount of time, you kind of like lose count, but it's been hundreds. But some of the notable ones, uh, T.D. Jakes, Bishop T.D. Jakes, I've worked with him on a couple of his books as well. Um, I've worked with uh, 
Fred Price on his book. I've worked with Dr. Cindy Trim. Uh, I've worked with Dr. Pat Bailey. A lot of these authors at the very beginning, they didn't want to use social media. So it's really funny now to see them really embracing it. Uh, I've worked with a lot of churches as well. Greater Grace, Word of Faith, Straight Gate. Uh, they all happen to run. Uh, mega churches and uh, really setting up their Facebook profiles and really getting them to get involved in the whole digital space. This time right now, I'm working with primarily speakers and authors. I have a magazine called Speakers Magazine, speakersmagazine.net, where we're really rolling out, oh, see the word here, rolling out uh, speakers that are relatively new and then on the covers are more, uh, I guess you say marquee speakers that have events, that have a uh, really signature events that they do every year. So that's enough about me, right? It's like, okay, and Rolling Out Magazine, that's, that's a magazine that really uh, featured me uh, earlier this year for the work that I was doing for uh, authors and speakers. So in today's webinar, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about five ways to get publicity without hiring a publicist, okay? At the end of this webinar, I would like you to know and it, and learn how to identify and find media contacts such as producers, reporters, guest bookers, etc. How to write a press release and pitch, pitch it so that it gets booked, right? To think like an editor. That's what I, one of the things that I do with my uh, branding accelerator program is I have a lot of editors and producers and journalists that come on and say, this is how we think. Okay, we're not trying to give you free publicity. You got to think like an editor. So I'll talk about that. Uh, what to do and not do on social media to get media attention. Uh, and then also how to capitalize on special holidays, events, or other news stories to get press. All right. So this is the official bio, right? Uh, I, I stopped counting when it says uh, she's a 20-year public uh, communications professional at a certain point in time. If you say 30, 40, it's like, well, how old is she? I'll be 60 this year in case you want to know. Uh, professionals, uh, working with uh, Speakers Magazine, a teach and a mentor, authors, speakers, entrepreneurs, how to build a platform, attract major media. A lot of my clients have been on CNN, TBN, The Word Network, Radio One, Open Magazine, Essence, Black Enterprise, PBS, many others. Uh, one of the things that I just really want to make sure that my authors do is that they become entrepreneurs. It's not just about the book, but they actually are entrepreneurs. Uh, one of the things that i just like to say that that is consistent in all of the different reinventions of the careers past that I've been on is that I connect the right people with the right project at the right time. And I just want to make sure that my clients get branded and paid like a superstar. So I'll go over the five steps really quickly and then we'll kind of go back. Okay, you see a little asterisk on number two because we'll spend more time there. But number one is identify and find contacts such as producers, reporters, and guest bookers, all right? Those are the names that a lot of them are going by if you're searching for who do I pitch, okay? So with daily newspapers, depending on what the press release is about, whether you're pitching the city editor or the features editor or the business editor, but it's always some type of editor. Will you pitch reporters at daily newspapers? It depends depends on the market. Like the larger the market, probably not. Because the editor is what who gives the reporter their marching orders. But in a small market, you probably could go directly to the reporter, directly to the writer, and pitch them a story. One of the ways that you will know if that reporter is interested is by, I model this, reading the paper. So, <laughs> so by reading the paper, knowing what exactly the reporter's beat is, the beat is like what they cover, whether they're covering politics, whether they're covering education, medicine, uh, personal development, whether they're covering local events, knowing exactly what it is that they cover and seeing that there's a pattern, you could then approach them if it's something that you, you're a subject mag magic subject matter expert in, you can then approach that particular reporter. So say for instance, they write, you're a, a health coach and you know that by reading the paper that this particular reporter writes on health topics, at the end of every article, sometimes at the beginning, depending on what it is, in the, in the Detroit market it's used at the end, they have their phone number and they have their email address. So you begin to stalk them. 
That's one way, all right? You begin to stalk that particular reporter who writes on health because you're a health coach and you want to be featured. So you're writing, uh, you're following them on Twitter because most reporters are on Twitter. They love Twitter. Uh, you go and friend them on LinkedIn if you can because you will then find out that they're very businesslike and they don't go for a lot of Facebook jokes and all that kind of games. Uh, you really, at that point, maybe develop a little bit of a following with them and you kind of get their vibe and you see what they're doing. Then you reach out with the email and say, hey, I read your article on such and such and I think that what I have to offer would help you in whatever, whatever it is that you see that they're doing. The key thing is that you are saying that I am a subject matter expert. I see what you're writing about. I think I can add to what you're doing. Versus, this is what people do wrong. I'm a health coach. I wrote a book. Here it is. Write about me. And that's really how they come off. Like, no, you don't know anything about me. I don't know you and you don't even follow me on Twitter or like anything on my Instagram. No, I'm just kidding. But they do. <laughs> they will kind of look at that. Okay. Because it's like, well, this person isn't one of the ways too to kind of rise above the fray is a lot of times reporters, if you're going to pitch the reporter, they are looking to look good to their boss. Everybody, if they're working a job, wants to look good to their boss. So how does someone look good to their boss? by sharing their story in social media, saying, oh, this person wrote a really good article, share it into your Facebook, share it into your Twitter, because their bosses will look at that their story is getting traction. Mm -hmm. Just like, the, you know, when I said the PR and the social media worlds collide, every reporter, every journalist now has two jobs. Not only do they have to write and deliver content every single day, but they also have to be worried about online stuff, which they didn't have to do when they went to journalism school. Well, I'm talking about the senior ones, right? So now their bosses are looking like, what are their, what are their numbers? How many people are resharing their stories? And you can comment at the end of their story. It's like a little blog, right? Mm -hmm. So comment at the end of their story this is a really good, you know, not, not like, oh, the great article, but, you know, something you read it and you're actually adding value so that they know that you read the story. All right. So that is one way. That's just with daily papers. Daily papers have to fill a news hole every single day. Every single day. That is their job. What is your job? To make their job easier so they will write about you, that you are their go-to person you are the expert, you always deliver. And you're not just trying to get free publicity so you can sell your stuff. They are not interested in that. They already have a job and they're not interested in trying to help you sell stuff. They're looking at how they can look good. So give an example of, um, I don't know if you can see this, but just recently MLK was here. Uh, last Monday, or, well, I'm timing, timing myself, but anyway, MLK comes the same time every year in January, right? And so a lot of people who have events, they can time it around, I'm getting ahead of myself, they can time it around events. So I had a press release go out using the keyword MLK. They had the event on MLK. It got picked up by the, the, the African American newspaper here, it was a large article in their MLK special edition. Could I have pitched it in December? And then it's like, well, I really want to pitch it in December because my event is in January. No, you pitch it around so they can end up in the MLK edition. Those are the things where it, it, it just collides and it feeds, it helps the, the journalist, the editor to do their job better. It was roughly about, probably about 750 words and they ran it verbatim. That's what happens if you write a really good press release sometimes for the African-American newspapers. That only happens for some of the African-American newspapers, maybe some smaller papers, but they will run it verbatim because they, they don't put their byline on it. It just, it just would run just basically as it looks like a story. So that's it for daily newspapers, okay. Uh, business reporters, the same thing. You read what, what beats they are within business. There's some people that cover banking. There's some people that cover uh, automotive. You look and find the right reporter that matches that. 
in terms of editors, there's city editors, there's features editors, there's sports editors, depending on what it is. You need to find them. They are real people. You need to know you're going to make their job easier. That's, that's the way you think, like a measure. So weekly newspapers, the same type of thing. Weekly newspapers, like I said, the African-American newspaper is weekly. All right. So how do you find a lot of these? You go to um, Cision, which is a really, really, uh, how you say, Cision, you can buy media contacts or you can find media contacts. Uh, there used to be a thing a long time ago, we use these really thick books and they were called like the Bulldog Reporter or the Bacons. They were just like big, they were like big, like phone books. And it was like, oh my God. And by the time they printed, media is so fluid, the people would, the people would leave. So you go and you're trying to put together your media list and you're calling or you're faxing or phoning and they're gone because by the time it's printed and sent to you, it's, they're gone. So I like using Cision. I also use a thing called Muck Rack, Muck, Muck Rack, <laughs> uh, which is really good. And so a lot of these things you pay for. There's another thing called ProfNet you could use. And, um, but getting down here after I go through this, my favorite that I use for my media contacts is LinkedIn. I love LinkedIn. So I'm giving you these titles for a reason. So you can go on LinkedIn, put in a producer, guest booker, reporter, they will have them in their headline typically. Or if you're looking for a particular medium, it's going to show up, they will show up. So with magazines, you're looking to pitch either the editor or the managing editor, never the publisher. All right, so you wanna do that. Do you pitch the writers? Mm, you can, but typically what you're going to send like a query uh, to a to an editor or a managing editor, and they will then maybe give it to the reporter or the writer. The writer basically is taking an assignment. The, a writer for a magazine is not like, I'm, I'm gonna write about this, and they go and write on it. No, they're the, the editor of a magazine because it is monthly, they have a set schedule. So typically maybe a writer will be working on something for a couple of months because it takes a little bit longer to pull those stories together. And so you pitch either the editor or the managing editor. Uh, this is if you want to be written about. If you want to write for, like I said, it's a query and you would send that to the editor or the managing editor, never the publisher. The publisher is just worried about the bills. Uh, the radio stations, news directors, never like the on-air personality. They don't care. They, they, what are they gonna, they're gonna, if you're not a singer, I mean, you're not gonna pitch the personality. They may have some things, but typically they're getting it from their news director. If you have a public uh, nonprofit, you're gonna pitch the, PSA, a public service announcement, and they'll do, that's by law, they have to do that for free. Same thing with TV stations. You have PSAs, you can give to the uh, PSA director, community affairs director. A lot of times, if it's hard news, it's the assignment desk or the producer. A producer, by watching the television show, you will know what their morning shows are, and that's, those are more featureish. I guess you would say more featureish. So you will, you will then pitch the news producer for that. The assignment editor is like the day-to-day -day hard news, but the news producer for a segment or segment producer is what you would look on in LinkedIn, a segment producer for local shows as well as national shows. They call them segment producers, but producers are typically the ones that make the decision whether you want to, whether your story is worthy. And the same thing, you write a press release, you pitch it from the standpoint of, this is going to help your audience. This will help you. This will make you look good to your boss. TV producers really like the fact that you will watch their show and break it down so that they don't have to think and write out a whole script or how that segment will go. So that's when you think like a producer, think like an editor. The more you can make it so that it's like, it's if you're media savvy, and you want media, so you want to be media savvy. This is how you, this is why publicists, I, I, my training was in journalism. So my degree is in journalism. So this is, I guess you say second nature. But if you're not, you have to study the media so you know how they think. So if you're trying to write a segment for whatever it is that you're doing, 
you have to watch the segment to see how they flow. So say for instance, there is a dance school and they want publicity for their recital that is in June, okay? So this has happened before. And they also have one little segment of in their recital called the Daddy Daughter Dance. Happens to be close to Father's Day. Really cool to see daddies. And, and think of it in terms of visually how the TV would like. It's good to pitch that for TV. Print, not so much because they can't show it. So with dance, it's okay. So each media has its own. What sounds better, what, what is visually going to be appealing in TV, and then what is good in print. So you have to study and, again, know which, one, which media is best. So with TV, pitched it, daddy-daughter dance, this is what we're doing. We have four or five fathers and their little girls coming out to dance. This is what, what it is. And that makes good news for them. It's already done. They have the music. They have the people. It's, so that looks good for them. That, that's making it good. Step two, or just on step one. Oh my goodness, how am I doing? God. Oh boy. Uh, step two, write a press release or a pitch that gets you booked. And so that's, that's down at slide number eight. So when we get to that, I'll go over that. But like I said, the basics of a press release, the who, what, when, where, why, and how, really fast. P press releases typically are one page. They're too long, people aren't gonna read them. A press release has a hook, a hook meaning that what is it that I would read in the headline that make me want to stop and think like, oh, okay. Basically, you'll read that hook and it's like, who cares? If no one, if you're reading that, that headline and it's like nobody cares, then you need to keep rewriting that press release, okay? So you want to write it with a hook, a hook meaning like, what is a hook? So for, I'll read you this one. So this particular one that got picked up. Make the dash count. Okay, it's like intrigue. What does that mean? MLK event focuses on the blueprint to create impact by crafting a vision to build lasting legacy. So it was all around MLK, but it also talked about his speech called the blueprint. And it also talked about vision, which is a lot of people are talking about vision 2020. So the subhead, that's the headline, the subhead goes on to say, Dr. Williams hosts Vision 2020 conference to show women how to find their purpose and power. So without anything, is there enough information about what is this about? I don't wanna read 300 words to figure out what, what she's trying to say. So the headline is, is cute, powerful, impactful, but enough intrigue. The second subhead, is almost like a mini soundbite, like this is what it's about. Then the release goes on to explain those facts. All right. So we'll get into that in slide eight. Number three, I think we can talk about it. think like an editor and think like a producer. Again, that comes from really studying, really studying uh, in terms of what it is a producer and an editor or, or writer, what, they, what they're writing about. How are their shows set up? And the same thing with radio or TV, it's producer, either one. So radio stations also have a news director and they also have a producer, uh, especially like in talk shows, they'll have like a producer. So radio, when I say terrestrial radio, they may have a, uh, a host, okay? And the host doesn't do hard news, but they take direction and cues from the news director. Mm -hmm. If it's a talk show format, then they'll have a producer because every day, for four hours, five days a week, they have to fill that news hole. Mm -hmm. All right. So step number four, social media do's and don'ts to get media attention. One of the don'ts, we'll start with that, is don't spam them. Nobody <laughs> likes to be spammed. Nobody even likes spam. The little spam that comes in the can. No, they don't like that. So you want to make sure that you don't spam them. When I say spam them, let me tell you, like I have seen on Twitter people who would act Good Morning America, at CNN, at Steve Harvey, at Tom Jordan, at, and it's all in their stream that they've at and say, hey, uh, I've got a book, I don't know what they say, but they would just add the same message to, the, to this stream of people in their, in their Twitter stream, adding CNN. And basically, it's, it's annoying, okay? That is not how you get their attention. 
because they're going to look and see that you add them and then they'll go back to your page and they'll see that you also add 40 other media outlets. That just looks asinine. Okay, so don't do that. Don't do that. What you can do is making sure on social media to get their attention is to pay attention to them. How about that? That's called social, right? Social media. So they're on Twitter. They're on LinkedIn looking at what they're doing. And you are commenting. You're tweeting. You're liking. You're posting. They friend you. You friend them. And you have a real relationship you're developing because the key word of it is social media. So many times people post and ghost. Hate that. They post this little stuff out there or they put it up in Hootsuite or they put it up in Buffer or whatever they use, send a bowl, and they just post and post and they've just got like a post machine going, right? And they're not interacting with anybody. They don't even know if somebody even sent them a message because they're just like, I'm just doing what I'm supposed to do. I'm posting my social media. Well, you have to interact. The whole reason why social media became, well, think about it, uh, Facebook started not because they wanted to run ads, even though that's what it is right now, pay to play, but it was for people to meet. It was their face was in the place and the man Zuckerberg would say, hey, this is how people can meet each other. So you want to meet the media and you want to act like a real human on the media. Don't spam them. Don't, uh, don't inbox them trash or junk or or that sort of thing okay so just saying that the, my media friends and and one of the things that i do where I, I can go back to that of how to um, find media contacts is to go where they hang out so every media has their own organizations and you can actually join as an associate if you want to so for me i'm an associate member of uh, national association of black journalists so I go to their conferences and things like that. I go to their meetings. Actually, I'm going to one of their meetings on Saturday. And you just talk to them. And they tell you what they like, what they don't like, what gets on their nerves. And I'm telling you, this at thing about that gets on their nerves, okay? So don't do that. Step number five. Uh, step number five, basically, is to capitalize on holidays, events, or other news stories to get press. They call it piggybacking. They call it newsjacking. Uh, like I just told you about the MLK event, having something around MLK in your press release, it gets picked up because they're searching for it. It's like, we got an MLK edition. We need to fill it. Well, give me some content. I don't, you know, hey, give me. It's like, oh, MLK, here it is. Okay, bam, it's in there. Same thing with Black History Month. Anybody that's African-American out here and you got a book, these reporters, these journalists, Black History Month, their editors have told them you need to find some content for Black History Month. So you better put something out there if you're African American or if you're trying to uh, target that market because this is the month, 28 days, get it in there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and then news jacking. That's the thing that uh, David Muirman Scott, he, he, he wrote a book called PR 2.0. And, um, Newsjacking means that you there's a story right now that's hot in the news and you can jump on that as well. I call it piggyback piggybacking back in the day when I was in journalism school, but now it's called newsjacking. And basically it's like when a reporter is looking for a different twist on the story that has been going around for a while, if you jump in and, and give it a different twist, then you can get picked up. Give an example. What's what's current in the news right now? The impeachment. Okay, so we're worn out about the impeachment. It's like, okay, how many different ways can we slice and dice this up? So you have a type of business where it can now obviously don't put out a press release like how to solve your impeachment roles, whatever. I mean, that just is like, well, but maybe it can be something where people are stressed out during the impeachment, your health coach. Okay. I'm just making this up on the fly. And you put out a press release of like how to de-stress during the impeachment trials. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's just something. So it's like, you know what? That's a different angle. That's a different twist. Mm -hmm. I hate talking about this whole impeachment thing was going on way, way too long. People are falling asleep at the wheel. It's like, okay, we need to know people are stressed out across America. 
what can you do healthy wise to handle the stress that's going on in America? So that could be one thing. And that's newsjacking because you're knowing people are talking about impeachment. So that's one of just one of the things. The main thing that I think for anyone when we're talking about one to get publicity without a publicist. Publicists, think about it, we were hired to be your middleman. Your middleman was the person that was, would go through the gate for you. Now there's no gatekeeper. You can go directly to the media and it's okay now because they know people can come directly to them because of the social media and you can find them. If you can find them, you can go directly to them. You don't necessarily need a publicist. People who hire me as a publicist today, they could do it themselves, but because of the stature that they are, they don't, they don't have the time. They're more bigger brands, so to speak. So the bigger brand you are, obviously Beyonce is not going to be her own publicist, right? <laughs> not that I... Not that I'm saying I handle Beyonce, but hey, if you listen to Beyonce, I would love to do your publicity. <laughs> but say uh, I'm working with the uh, author now, uh, Debbie Turner. She was Miss America 1990, and she has a book coming out this year. So she could do her own publicity, but hey, she was Miss America. She doesn't. She hires a publicist to do all of her scheduling, all right? Pitching, scheduling, and coordinating all of that for her. That's the difference versus like, I am a subject matter expert. I can go directly to the producer, to the editor, to the reporter, show them the book that I've written, show them the blogs that I've written, show them, let them hear the podcast that I've written because I am a person that will help them really do a better job in their, in their, for their audience, for their, for their, for their uh, media that they work for. So those are the two differences of like, well, why would people be their own publicists today? And why can't I just hire publicists? It's almost like when people come up to me and they say, I'm writing a book. I say, oh, that's great. He says, I need an agent. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, do you know agents work on commission? Uh, yeah. I said, so they're probably going to work for the people that already have a platform that they know they can get sold quicker and make money. It's like you have a house. You could sell the house for a NBA star or you could sell it for the mom and pop down the street. You could sell it for the NBA star and get a bigger commission versus like trying to get all these mom and pop houses sold, right? So where would a person put their attention? The same thing with publicists. You could work for a public, you could hire a publicist and there's no guarantee, just letting you know how we work we do not guarantee any media. We can't because we don't own it. The only thing we could guarantee is something that we own. If you don't own it, for instance, you could, the, 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 the reporter can say your story is going to run on Friday, but hey, if an earthquake happens, your story gets bumped. You can't guarantee anything in the media because you don't own it. So the main thing with media is to develop the relationships for me is NABJ, National Association of Black Journalists. Um, there's also other events where uh, SPX, mm -hmm. Society Professional, SPJ rather, Society Professional Journalists, they have their own conferences. And there's, you can even go to some PR conferences as well and journalists kind of hang there. Or some of the bigger conferences like say South by Southwest, media hang out there. Um, there's larger conferences, power networking, some media hang out there. So Auto shows as well. When you go to different events, besides going to get the information from the event or the conference, check out the media that are there. Typically, there's always going to be a sign-in table that says media. Hang out there. As they come and give up their pass, their credentials, you just say, hey, how are you? They're real people. My, I'm here at this conference. What are you looking for? Because they're, they're at the conference. They're trying to cover stuff. I don't understand why people don't get this. If you're going to a major conference, go to the media row, go to the media sign-up table, hang out with the media where they are. I'm not saying stalk them, but at least be aware because how will you ever meet them face-to-face? -face? 
they're coming there to cover something. If you're there at the conference and say, I'm just trying to think of a conference. So they're coming to the conference and it's a podcast world. Say it's podcast world and you're a podcaster. So you go and you see where the media is signing up, signing, signing, you know, getting their credentials and you're standing there and you see someone there. It's like from, I don't know, some newspaper. It's like, hey, so you're here at this conference. What, what are you looking for? What kind of stories are you looking for? So I'm looking for people who've been podcasting for two, two or three years. And, and this is the first time at their conference. Hey, that's me. I've been podcasting for two or three years. And it's my first year at this conference. I'd love to be a source for you. Mm-hmm. See, it's I'd love to be a source for you. Not like, hey, Mr. Media, I'm here at this conference. Interview me so I can get, so, so my podcast can get famous. They're not looking for that. All right. So I'm just trying to get you to flip the script in terms of what you're thinking about. So any of those major conferences, social media world, sometimes they have media there. Every conference usually has some kind of media uh, credentials that they're giving out. And then they're usually at a separate table. So you can go and hang out there, take a picture at the table, you know, and then start following them on Twitter. It's like, follow them on Twitter. It's like, hey, I'm at, your, I'm at this conference. Now that you can add at them. All right, that's okay, because that's for real. I'm not saying you can't at the media, but just don't spam the media. You can at them on Twitter, say, hey, I'm at the same conference um, at the Oprah Winfrey Vision Tour conference. I'd love to, to meet you. Let's have coffee. That's okay, versus like a whole string of them, all right? Uh, okay, how to get invited back. So... You've been on the radio show. You've been on the TV show. How do you get invited back? This is a friend of mine. His name is Angelo Henderson. I used to be on his show every Friday. We called it Facebook Friday. And Angelo invited me back. I came on the show one time and I then became like a series, right? Like every Friday I was driving downtown Detroit. Uh, Angelo has since passed. It's been four years now. Uh, Unexpectedly, a blood clot. And uh, still my friend, miss him every single day. I think about him and his, and his, his son, though. His son is really just like him. He's really uh, taken off and doing a lot of good things out in L.A. He's from Detroit, but he's out in L.A. now. So how to get invited back? You know, you don't want to just be a one and done. You want to be a regular. You want to maybe they give you a show. Who knows? So be, be good. Know your stuff. Be interesting, be fun, be funny if you can. Now, if you're not funny, please don't try to be funny because that's gonna, that will tank you. Uh, know your talking points, but talk to the host like you're having a real conversation. So you ever have, <laughs> you ever seen some interviews where the person is so set on their talking points that the host asks them a question and they don't even answer it and they just go like straight past what the host asks and just starts talking about their talking points. Hosts hate that. They hate it with a passion. It's like, listen, I did not bring you on this show for you to just to, to spew out your talking points. You need to talk to me. So make their job easier because if you make their job easier, you'll be invited back. Give quick, succinct answers. Let the host lead. All right. Let them lead. You are the guest. They are the host. So don't over talk them like on this webinar, like I'm talking for 45 minutes, right? Um, When you're done, drop a quick email. You will be surprised how many people don't say thank you to the producer thanking them for the opportunity. If you can, drop them a handwritten note. That's even rarer, okay? They will really remember you if you do that. And if you really want to just go all out, send them a gift. Not, I mean, you know, not a bribe, but like it's just a little gift, a trinket, something, get Starbucks card. Just say thank you. I mean, you know, it's a, you know, maybe we should have coffee sometime and send them a card. Little things like that count. You know, on Valentine's Day, send them a Valentine's Day card. On, on if they're a mom, send them a Mother's Day card. I mean, you know, just Christmas, be nice to people. I'm talking about be human. Public relations, most publicists have really good um, people skills. Uh, so that's part of being like how to get publicity without hiring publicists is that you got to be a people person. So that means you got to care more about people than you do about trying to get your message out. That's a whole nother flip, right? So you have to reiterate to the producers that you're always available anytime. Call me anytime. Call, yes, I'm available. If, if you ever have someone that just like backs out at the last minute, I'm available. I'm your girl. All right. Just make that 
for the producer so that they know that, that you're in their speed dial, okay? Be grateful. Like I said, develop a relationship, be, be genuine, okay? And never ask. This is, they hate this. They hate this. I'm telling you. So after you've been on their show, radio show, TV show, um, ask, can I have a copy of that? No, they, they don't work for you. They don't work for you, boo. Don't say, can I have a copy of this? Because now you're making them work. Like, I don't want to, no. But the publicist could ask that because I would always ask that. But what you can ask, is there a link that I can share on social media to my network? You know why that sounds different? It's like, I want to share it out so other people can see what wonderful work that station has done. Not that I want this for my own website. <laughs> That's what it's, it's like. Can I get a copy of this? Like, I want to put this out here on my website. No, it's, it's I want to share it to my network. Okay. So be likable. That's all I'm saying is people like people that are likable. And it's, it's not a class on that. You just got to do it. So this is that slide number eight I was telling you about. Okay, so how to write a winning press release to get picked up by the media. I kind of went over a little bit, but the first thing, in order for a press release or a media release to be get picked up, it must have news and be newsworthy. And, you know, you have to make sure that it's targeted to the audience for that medium. So... One a big mistake made with press releases is to send something that doesn't interest your target audience. So you're sending this press release out and it's like, I don't know, just give me a wild example. So the, the magazine is 17 and you are definitely 60 years old and you're sending them information about your book about women over 50. Okay, well, 17 is not going to pick it up. You just spammed us and why did you even waste both of our time? Okay, so just that kind of thing. Uh, make sure that it has a sharp story angle. If you want your press release to get published, you need to think like a reporter. Ask yourself, again, what you can do to make the material useful to the journalist or be of real interest for the reporter and the public you're trying to reach. All right, so the angle, the hook or the angle. i uh, shorten to the point. Like I said, it's about one page, never longer. At that point, you are just, um, you're burning up, burning up ink. You, it, brevity is the key and that's what journalists love they love brevity all right if it's too wordy it gets lost the people aren't going to read it make sure you put the most important stuff up the top because they're going to cut it anyway um start strong if a reporter will only to read the first paragraph of your press release they should know exactly what it's about the first paragraph of your press release should tell them the main story and the rest is just to elaborate and give examples that is the hook at the beginning and then the five w's learn it in journalism school, who, what, when, where, and why, and how. You know, don't make them guess. One of the things, because I also am a publicist and a publisher, is that people will send me press releases and a producer because I produce podcasts. They'll send me press releases and I have to dig to find out, like, when is the event, what time, what, where, what, what city. I mean, you name me the hotel, but what city. I mean, it's just like basic stuff that I've got to now dig and be like a detective in order to figure out your press release. Journalists do not want to decode. They want to just be told the facts, all right? And if they have to call you, they probably won't. They'll probably move on to another press release. The other thing, media magic, is HIRO. And I didn't talk about HIRO. I talked about how to find media contacts. HIRO stands for Help a Reporter Out. It was started by a guy named um, Peter Shankman. And really... He started this thing because he wanted to help his reporter friends out to find leads. You, like I said, they're always on the hunt for sources, for subject matter experts, for content. And so they need content. They need people who will give them a good story, a good quote, a good soundbite, come on their show. So Help a Reporter Out does this where you can sign on as a host. So go on, select, I'm a source, and they'll send you leads every single day sometimes two or three times a day but they're they're broken up by if you're a business so you'll read the ones what the business reporters are looking for maybe held or different different areas so you can sign up for HARO and that will be one of the things where you will get um, leads and I've had friends that have been written up in entrepreneur fast company uh, they've even had some things on CNN.com from HARO 
and just give you uh, some of the things that I coach when I coach people on and they were like, I don't really believe you. I don't know if this is, I've had friends who have been on uh, Good Morning, uh, Good Morning, not Good Morning America, but Good Morning Day shows in different cities in Washington, Good Day Washington, Good Day Atlanta, because they follow these things. They were following the reporters. They actually became, had relationships. And then when they saw there was an opportunity, they then pitched them. And because they had like a quasi social media relationship, they got on. All right. So again, it's one of those things where you really have to pay attention to what is going on. Then the last thing, the final tips are some of PR resources to send uh, your press release to. I didn't talk about SEO press releases because we're a little bit uh, into 40 minutes. But one of the things is that SEO press releases are press releases that are online and they're searched and optimized by keywords. So the ones that do this are prweb.com. You can go there, go to prweb.com, post your press release there. It'll guide you through it. And the other thing is blackpr.com. I use that a lot. prlog.org. I use that a lot. PR Newswire. Obviously, that, those two, PR um, Newswire, PR Web, uh, part of Cision Family, and they're kind of like the, the monopoly over media contacts because it used to be owned by Bacons and it became the Cision and whatever, whatever. So anyway, they're, they're good. All right, they're good if you really have a big, powerful press release to get out there. Mm -hmm. Businesswire.com is a really good one. I use that a lot. And Gibby Inc., that was from a long time ago, but I still like them a lot. This One of the ways that I would suggest that you really learn how to write press releases is to go to any of these sites and read the press releases. They would not put the press releases out if they weren't good. So to see how press releases are written, um, go and read like PR Newswire. And then from time to time, read in your category look for the keywords and see how things are written. That's a really good tip. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> so uh, join the conversation, DB Summit. If you like what I said, uh, my Twitter handle is Pam Perry, just basic Pam Perry. I was there a long time ago. I got my name. No hyphens, no underscores, just Pam Perry on Twitter. Uh, I have a program called the Brand Accelerator where I have a lot of my reporter friends that are actually on uh, the program. I had Alfred Edmonds from Black Enterprise. He's there. Uh, I had um, a lot of award-winning journalists from the Detroit News there. So it's a program. It's called the Brand Accelerator Program, brandacceleratorprogram.com. Uh, you can go there, find out more information. But I really, really enjoyed talking with you guys. And hopefully you got some some good uh, information out here. Again, like I said, making sure that uh, you go to these websites and also knowing that books make the best hooks. So a lot of times that if you have a book, that is the hook, okay? All righty, well, I'm Pam Perry and thank you so much for joining us. All right, God bless. Take care.